Voyage with the Vikings, Chapter 11, The Full Moon. Leif, Hilda, and the cousins left the longhouse. So did a few of the men and women. As the Norse Christians walked toward their homes, they bid Leif and Hilda good night. Beth breathed in the fresh air of the village courtyard. She looked up at the sky. Wispy green lights danced like smoke in the wind. What is that? Patrick asked. I've seen it on TV. It's called the Northern Lights, Beth whispered to Patrick. It was the fourth amazing thing she had seen in Greenland. The moon was full. It cast a white glow over the village. The moon reminded her of the note from inside the imagination station. I need a Viking sunstone before the new moon. Beth pulled on Leif's sleeve. When is the new moon, she asked. Leif stroked his blonde beard. What manner of girl are you, he asked. You know chess, but you don't know the new moon is 14 days? Come, I'll show you to the sunstone. It will teach you about the sky. Beth and Patrick both gasped. Patrick put a hand on the hilt of the sword. Isn't this yellow jewel the sunstone? Leif laughed. No, he said. What made you think it was? Just a guess, Patrick said sadly. So where's the real sunstone? Leif led them to a huge rock in the center of the village. The sunstone was taller than Beth. It had symbols, holes, and lines carved all over it. We use the sunstone to mark the seasons, Leif said. It also points us southward. Leif knelt down by the rock. He took Patrick's hand and placed it on the sunstone. Feel the arrow mark, Leif asked. Patrick nodded. At noon, the sun passes over at that mark, Leif said. When the sunstone casts a shadow, we mark where the shadow falls here. Leif dragged his finger across the ground. Beth and Patrick followed his motion. Several flat rocks surrounded the sunstone. Symbols and holes were carved into the rocks as well. When the noon sun reaches this slash mark, said Leif, we know it is spring. We can sail. Can the sunstone be moved away from Greenland? Beth asked. Leif looked at Beth. Of course not, he said. This stone will only work in this place. My people rely on it. Beth turned to Patrick. She whispered, Now what are we supposed to do? Chapter 12 The Bolted Door Patrick and Beth were alone in the church. Leif had left already and said goodbye. Hilda had helped the cousins get ready for the night, and then she too had left them. A small fire burned in the fire ring. Wrapped in warm fur blankets, the cousins lay sleeping on the dirt floor. A loud thud outside the door woke Beth. She had been dreaming about Albert. She dreamed he was trapped in a tall tower. He had no food, no water. Patrick also stirred, but he was still half asleep. I had hoped we could help Mr. Whitaker and his friend Albert, Beth said sadly, but we can't bring the sunstone to wit's end. They were sad and silent for a while. Patrick snuggled deeper into his fur blanket, trying to think hurt his head. And we have to get back to the imagination station, Beth said. Otherwise, the red button must sail away with leaf. We'll go first thing in the morning, Patrick said. I ache all over. I'm tired. He rolled over. His back was now toward Beth. No, said Beth. We have to go now. I have a feeling it is morning. She threw the fur covers off and sat up. She put on her boots. Come on, Patrick, she said. Let's see if the sun is up. Maybe we should stay, Patrick said. There's no school here. Stay? Leif is leaving for Norway, Beth said. Then Eric the Red will make us his slaves. He might even sell us to a farmer. 
Then you'd wish for a school. I don't want to take care of sheep, Patrick said. And remember that we have his sword, a family treasure, Beth said. Don't forget what happened last time someone took his treasures. Patrick decided he wanted to be far away from Eric. He quickly put on his boots. Okay, he said, I'm coming. In a few minutes, they were ready. They went to the door. They pushed on it. They pulled on it. It wouldn't move. There must be a beam across the door outside, Beth said. Patrick took the sword from his belt. I'll whack at the door with this. Step back. He lifted the sword with both arms above his head. Wham! The sword made a small dent. Wham! Patrick swung as hard as he could. Wham! Beth covered her ears. The banging is so loud, you'll wake the whole village. Then, what are we supposed to do? Patrick asked. He kicked the door. It slowly swung open. The cousins looked at the doorway. They expected someone to step inside. No one came. Patrick pushed the door further open. He stepped outside. How did that happen? Beth asked. The wood beam that had locked the door was now resting against the outside wall of the church. Look, Patrick said and pointed. A man was running away from the village. Patrick saw the faint outline of a helmet on his head. He also heard the clanging of the man's armor. Who is that? Beth asked. I don't know, but he's wearing armor, Patrick said. Beth looked at Patrick. So? Vikings don't wear armor like that, Patrick said. Beth pushed past Patrick. It doesn't matter, she said. The sun is rising. We have to get to that ship or we'll never get home.